Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. The Mintra interview was fun because it was just uh, 15 minutes with the head of product, uh, 15 minutes with Mukesh, the CEO, and 15 minutes with Pooja, who was the head of HR at the time. It was not exactly what happened, but the, I think the whole conversation was around, okay, do you know what product management is? I'm like, no, I don't know what product management is. Then they asked them, do you know what product management is? They're like, well, we have some idea, we're not sure. Uh, when is it that you discover product management for the first time? I think for me, I wanted to make sure that, okay, perhaps I would try to get into a media company at the end of this. Now, what ends up happening is that you don't really get media companies coming to uh, placements at I'm Bangalore. I remember somebody in placement committee asking me, okay, if you want to get a media company, tell us which company, then we'll get it for you. I had a very short list. Yeah. It wasn't a very long list at all. So that was also a problem. The thing for me was also that I had also worked at tech before. And I had worked at this startup that it had at and I was sort of like, I knew what tech can do. And this was just when the tech revolution was starting to take place in Silicon Valley as well. And I knew that it was going to happen in Bangalore and in India as well. So what happened with me was, uh, I held out for a while. I didn't want to sit for, I didn't sit for finance companies. I don't know if I even applied for consulting. I don't remember. Maybe I've applied a bit here and that I don't think I got in or anything. And so, but I was like really selective and I was wasting my time. I said, no, I'm going to wait for interesting companies to come back. But then Mintra came along and Mintra, <laughs> the Mintra interview was fun because it was just uh, 15 minutes with the head of product, uh, 15 minutes with Mukesh, the CEO and 15 minutes with Pooja, who was the head of HR at the time. And uh, I think it was Quite, I mean, it's not exactly what happened, but the, I think the whole conversation was around, okay, do you know what product management is? I'm like, no, I don't know what product management is. Then they asked them, do you know what product management is? They're like, well, we have some idea, we're not sure. And I wish I could say there was anything more strategic, but it was honestly that. I just kept the lens of, this is interesting, and let me go try it out. I think the way I rationalized it to myself was, I said, look, for any media company to succeed in India, the digital thing is happening. Print is all dead anyway, right? So it's really important that if you have to make a media company succeed in India, you would probably have to figure out how to quote unquote sell online. I'm not saying sell clothes, sell, but you have to understand the principles of how online works as a medium. Um, and being a product manager in a company that's trying to sell something completely new seemed like a way that was like similar. I think that's how I rationalized it to myself and said, okay, let me, I, I can't get a media company, but it seems like this is good, interesting learning that I can use later in the future. And so I went. Through. So that's what Mintra happened. Uh, Mintra was fun. It was great two years that I spent there. I solved a lot of, so I was the product manager of something called revenue, which is that, so if you see right now on Mintra, if you ever buy anything with a discount, um, that first, I don't know if it's now, now of course, I'm sure it's not there now, but I'm thinking the first version of that was built by me because that was actually a tricky thing because it's not just straightforward where you just do like a 10% or 20% or sometimes you may have things like buy two, get 10% or buy three, get 30% or buy one, get two free. Um, things like that. And how do you build that for an online experience? How do you build that for a supply chain experience? What happens if something comes late, you have to split shipment, um, partial returns, customer complaints. So it's all very new territory. And I think Mintra was also trying, figuring it out as it went along. Um, and I think I also had the opportunity to try out a lot of new things. Some of the things worked. So it was good. So I did that. I did some stuff on customer experience. It was nice. So I had a lot of fun for like a couple of years there. Uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, so I think fundamentally I did that. Then I think the shift happened for me because I said, okay, look, if this is online, the next big shift is obviously mobile, right? And that was when mobile started becoming a big thing. Again, I started thinking in terms of if you're a media publisher, I would imagine that, and this was also coincided with the rise of BuzzFeed. At that time, the conventional wisdom was that, oh, you can make it work if you have really smart ad tech around it. Then you can be a media publisher and make it work. And so I said, okay, let's see how to do this. And there was only one company was in Mobi, which was also based in Bangalore, which okay. was an ad tech company. It was a company that I really was attracted to because A, it was a, I think it was the first Indian unicorn, if I'm not wrong, but it was one of those companies that was uh, building core ad tech product headquartered in India, not for a US company saying that, okay, of course you have presence in US, et cetera, but we build 
stuff here. We have a really formidable product team, really formidable tech team, which at that time I remember seeing their product and tech team on LinkedIn and it was, and people scaring me and telling me that, oh, you're interviewing with Inmobi. That's like no chance. You won't get in. It's like really, really difficult. The bar is really high, um, which it was. It was definitely true. But, but they basically, I thought that it would be a great experience to go and try to figure out how do you monetize something with mobile? What are some of the things I can do to develop an instinct for product management? A lot of the knowledge that you get and a lot of the develop, instincts that you develop are fundamentally on the job, right? And that I, I genuinely wish there was any other way to say it, but it's true. Hopefully you will have people who will tolerate those mistakes and you'll learn from it. Uh, but that is, and, and if there are different types, there are different flavors of product management. There is product management that is more of, oh, there is more tech focused or there is more consumer focused or B2B focused and all of them require different kinds of, like different, you're like, if you have skills, you're like calibrate them slightly differently, different ways. But that being said, let me say a few things that generally don't change across the board. Okay. One is that you are going to be working with people a lot. If you're not comfortable working with people, uh, probably rethink because that you're going to struggle a bit in doing right. things in general. That's one. Uh, two is that, see, uh, it's important to have a point of view on things. Right. It's generally what happens is I've seen product managers. You should never fall into that trap where you do what you call project management, where somebody else is telling you or creating a vision and you end up just executing that without a point of view, uh, which has happened to me uh, many times in the past. Sometimes still happens to me even today. And that's okay. You will always have some parts of that that will happen to you because there are people who are smarter than you. And if you see that, you say, yeah, this makes maximum sense. Let's do it. But developing a certain point of view will be useful. Um, and sometimes those points of view may be very contrarian. For instance, I think the classical example that I say is that sometimes people say that product managers have to listen to customers. And I say that's not really true. Uh, sometimes you have to, you can listen to them and not give it, give them what they want because uh, users also don't know what they want. People have been asking for Twitter for years for give us an edit button. Please give us an edit button. And Twitter has said, in fact, they even make jokes about it. The official Twitter handle keeps making jokes saying edit button coming soon. And they're not, they're making fun of you. So, They'll never do it. They will never do an edit button because an edit button fundamentally changes Twitter. So those kind of instincts are not that easy uh, to stand and basically say that I know better over what you want or what the salesperson wants or what the engineer wants or what my CEO wants is not easy. The forgettable product managers are the ones who try to do everything and say, I will be this much in design, this much in communication, this much, because I know that product has to have good design, good communication, good structure, good this thing. That's what the books tell me. So I'll balance all of it out. And sure, you'll build a product, but it'll be a relatively forgettable product. Praveen, what is a product manager doing in a content company? Fundamentally, the way you look at this is you have to see it as a quote unquote, a product driven organization as well. So the lens that we look at the can and we're really proud of it is that we are a blend of both journalism organization as well as a product tech organization. And we've sort of like melded the two together stories. Or even if you talk in terms of content, I have the best content in the world. Now, how do I monetize this? The traditional levers of growth don't really work because what are the traditional levers of growth if you were quote unquote non paywall What would you do? You'd basically say, okay, I am going to drive SEO. So I'm going to do search engine optimization and keywords and all this stuff, which people have been doing for years. Uh, I'm going to do social media marketing so that people find this on, you know, social media, they see it, etc. Something like what BuzzFeed did. Or I'm going to basically make sure that there is reference. So I'm going to put this in like websites that would link to me so that it would get lead to quote unquote traffic to this place. So that is, that is the traditional way of looking. Now, if you said that, okay, now all of this is now paywall. Now what can you do? And that becomes harder because social media doesn't really work the same way because fundamentally what you're really left with is you have to drive all growth that is through products. And that means that you have to build products around creating and driving growth around. And that is just product thinking and the same product rigor that goes into multiple things goes into this as well. Outside of the kit and the other products that you work for, which is your favorite product and why? I think from a design standpoint, and I don't think they get as much credit as this. I think, I think ClearTrip has probably like design and UX thinking is like really, really, really magnificent, really attention to detail. They were the ones who were doing UX and design focus and nobody cared about it. And I imagine, I'm sure there must have been a lot of meetings inside ClearTrip with their CEO and design head, with their probably investors and board people saying that, why are you focused on this? How much additional revenue did your redesign get us? And they probably must have said nothing. But 
our customers love it, our users love it. And I think that's, it takes guts to do something like that. Slack, of course, Slack's communication, man, Slack's communication is like outstanding. There is nobody else who captures that essence of, because they understand really well that this is a product you're going to be using like nearly eight, nine hours a day. It's very important that it becomes friendly and, and that communication is something that they spent a lot of time trying to solve. Yeah, I think Airbnb also fairly interesting, good product thinking. I'm sure at the end of this call, I'll regret that I'll say, oh, shit, there are five products that I forgot. Uh, Airbnb's thinking, et cetera, I really like. I mean, Apple, of course, for their entire focus on simplicity, although now it's getting a little more complex, but at that time, the focus on simplicity, et cetera, I really like. I like the Mac a lot. Uh, I mean, apart from just a web or a mobile product, the Mac is a very nice product, um, very well designed. You can see that there is a lot of love put into the product, the way it's crafted, a lot of craft involved. So I think those are, I mean, I, I don't think I'm saying very surprising answers, but yeah, those are the ones that I really like. I'm sure I'll regret it. I'm sure there are some two, three clever questions, answers that I've forgotten. I mean, but yeah, but broadly, these are the things I remember right now. So why do you think the Indian consumer does not pay for content? In India, I don't think it's necessarily true that people don't necessarily pay for any kind of content media. If you look at, say, Hotstar, if you look at, say, Netflix, these are all examples that I give of outlets where, yeah, sure, the numbers probably dwarf with respect to the rest of the world, but the shift is happening. Um, and it's going to take a little more time. And obviously, the audience that, that is willing to pay is growing larger every day. And I think we need companies who are willing to basically say that this is what we are doing and we believe that this is the value that we bring and we believe that it should be paid for. And we also then will have people who follow it and say, okay, we'll do this. There was this interesting thing that we found where if you Google, uh, if you check the tr trend for people searching for the keyword best and uh, the keyword free, right? And you see that graph uh, over the last like five years, you can see that the word free slowly sort of like diminishes and best is starting to like take over, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, so it just means that I think people are getting to a point where they're, they're starting to realize that, look, if, if I need quality, I probably need to pay for it. And I think that mindset is developing inside people. So yeah, I, I'm optimistic. I think it'll take some time, but I'm optimistic. I think they're on the track. All right, uh, Raveen, thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Konj. Thank you so much. Hi guys, uh, Inside IM has come up with an exciting new one-on-one -on -one mentorship product where you get to interact with superstar managers from different businesses, different functions. You can ask them everything around your career, your education, your future success. If you are interested, the link is in the description below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.